Hello friends, it's Phil coming to you live from the back of the van. Now, today we're gonna to be doing, a, or we're gonna be attempting to do a lawn renovation. I'm expecting it to be a slightly wet and damp day ahead, but hopefully if I'm lucky, I'll actually get the job done before it starts tanking it down again. So come and join me. Can I ask you a big favor actually, before we get started? I'm nearly at 500 subscribers. For all of you that have joined me on this merry little journey of lawn care, can I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. We're building something that I think will be quite good fun eventually. So look, if you haven't yet subscribed and if you haven't hit like on this video yet, can you just do it for me? I'd be indebted to you. And I promise that the videos will get better every time. Thanks anyway. Right, so the first job is to empty out the van. Actually, um, there's not an awful lot of stuff to bring through um, on this occasion, but there's enough. So um, I'm gonna give you a little show of what's in the van. Um, <coughs> the van. Um, uh, yeah, just so you know what you can fit in a van. Anyway, here we go. Let's go and have a little <coughs> Here we go, let's have a look. Um, right, let's open up this side. So, um, what we've got in here at the moment is some uh, Jack's Magic, uh, some topsoil. Somewhere in there, there's some seed. There's also a germination sheet, a um, bit of fertilizer, um, the spreader, Everest spreader, that I'm gonna calibrate. Uh, I'll show you how to do that another day. And then the gears down the back there. So there's a scarifier and a mower. Plus there's some brakes and other bits and pieces. So that's um, what we're gonna fit in the, um, in the Toyota Pro Ace. Um, but it all fits in there quite snugly. Um, yeah, that's it. Anyway, I better get on and get out. Before I show you all the gear, um, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an insight into what happens just before everything gets started. Um, what I do is I do a little tour of the lawn. Um, and I mainly do that in order that I can kind of build a bit of a picture as to how I'm going to go about this, i.e. what needs to be done first, um, second, third, fourth, fifth, and all of that. And the logic that I always apply to everything is you never do anything twice and you never move anything twice unless you really have to. So the whole thing is, is about starting a process and the process basically is sequential in order that you optimize the time to do it. And the other thing is um, by working out that kind of process, I also work out how to put the equipment back as I go through the job. So basically when the job's finished, um, the van's packed already. So it's kind of not do the work, then pack the van. It's do the work and pack the van as I go. So just thought I'd share that with you. Um, it's a helpful tip, really. Here's all of the gear now assembled out of the van. I will take a tour around it, just so you know what's what. Um, I'm just gonna give you that little tour that I do of the lawn, just to inspect its condition. So obviously this area is where the dog bounds out. Um, it's pretty uneven. Uh, let's say there's particular evidence of crowns, kind of the high bits, um, if you can see that. Um, now there are weeds in the lawn, but obviously seeding and weed control can't be done at the same time. So what I tend to do is renovate the lawn, grow the weeds, and then come back at some point in the future, or the clients do it, um, put down a, uh, a gentle weed killer, probably in about three months time, once the grass is all established. But, um, <clears throat> so that's the worn out doggy area. And then there's the transit to the corner over here. And then there's a load of branch fall, ground elder, which you can't really do anything about. Um, and obviously you've got these tree thorns, the hawthorn there. I uh, don't know what that is, I should know. Um, but this corner um, is going to be a bit of a challenge to look after. Growing in shade with hedges around it um, is difficult to maintain grass coverage, let's say. 
should be able to get grass coverage uh, but looking after it's going to be kind of a maintenance challenge um, <clears throat> then we've got this patch over the back here uh, which obviously gets a bit of sunlight so that's pretty happy so that's pretty good so so the first thing to do on this lawn is I'm going to clear out the debris around the back there then I'm going to give the lawn a good cut uh, get it down to a first cut height which is usually around about 30 mil just have a little look and um, then I will decide whether it needs a second cut before I scarify it and kind of agitate the surface in order for the seeding. So um, that's the little tool. Jack's Magic, not generally available in every garden centre now because it still contains peat. But whilst it's still with us, it's still the best product to use for this. So there's a bit of Jack's Magic there. A little bit of topsoil just for dressing some of the shallows, which I think I will need. Um, there's the trusty Wee Bank Scarifier and my customised heater uh, with the uh, the fresh bumper bomb. If you have, if you don't know anything about the customised the customised heater project that I've got going on, then there's a few videos. Um, well, there's what two videos about that uh, grass seed. I have gone to my local grass seed supplier and just bought what I need for the lawn. Um, we've got germination sheet, some pegs, fertilizer in here, and we've also got. A bag of iron which I typically spray over the lawn uh, it kind of helps with the germination um, or it certainly helps with a renovation so uh, and then I've got my trusty 12 year old spreader that needs a bit of TLC um, and two rakes so the left hand rake I use for kind of debris grass kind of light so, uh, light movement they say uh, and then you've got the landscaping rake these other bits of gear they, they're not um, they're not mine but they're here anyway so um, that's all the gear that you need for uh, to renovate this so let's crack on shall we first things first give it a clean up uh, and then um, on to the task is done uh, the edge has been uh, raked out they say um, what can I say profound that's really really useful at this stage so um oh the grass seed I think that's quite important actually now the most important thing about your grass seed is you have to buy fresh grass seed now I know no one's really ever kind of said that to you fresh grass seed what exactly that is that surely that's the grass seed you can go and get from a garden center a, uh, a standard garden center or a standard supermarket this time of year fresh grass seed right but here's the thing grass seed deteriorates the longer you keep it and i think from memory um if you have a kilogram of grass seed and you keep it for six months it deteriorates by 25 percent as much as that so there's a little test that grass scientists do, don't quote me, but I think this is the case, is that they will um, assess a hundred seeds. They say professional grass seed is assessed regularly. They assess a hundred seeds and they get a germination rate <coughs> of over 85%, 85 to hundred percent is the, I think it's kind of like the, the compliance for professional grass seed. In some cases, some specialist seed um, suppliers will aim to get over 90% germination out of 100 seeds. But look, if you go to a garden centre and the seed's been sitting around for a while, or you don't know where the seeds come from, or you don't know the, you don't know the history of the supply chain, they say, that seed could have been in a box for six months or longer. You don't know. Um, with professional seed, uh, there is always a label on the bag, which I always check, which gives you the bagging date and quite often the harvest date as well. So you know when the seed was actually harvested and you know when it was bagged. And therefore you have a pretty good understanding of the freshness of the grass seed. But if you go buying grass seed, <clears throat> just be very, very wary of where you're buying it from and how long it may have been sitting around for, because it does deteriorate. It's a natural thing. It doesn't stay kind of it stays dormant as a seed for a long time but it does deteriorate so you have to keep fresh with your fresh grass seed and in effect the way that works is the more money you spend on your grass seed the fresher your grass seed is so anyway, I thought that'd be useful 
tip to share at this point before I get on. Anyway, the next thing to do is going to give the grass cut. Let's have a look. Let's see what's below, shall we? But to the 48, yes, the Hazel 48, and it's got a little bit of wear and tear in the wheels and the rear roller, so we know that it's not cutting at the exact heights that are set or governed by the um, the the lever, let's say. But for the first cut, we're going to go down to ooh, we're going to go down to a three. And that is going to get pretty close and give us a good idea of the condition of the grass at around about 14, 21, 28, 30, 30, 30 to 40 mil, approximately. So we're going to cut it at that height with the blue bumper bar, obviously. Um, we're going to cut this, won't take long. Uh, we will have a look at its condition um, once, it, once it's been cut and I'll, uh, I'll run you through what I can see. Anyway. <laughs> So if you've watched some of the previous videos, you'll know that I'm particularly interested in the efficiency of a grass cut and the, in particular, um, the speed at which you can get things done. So if you can see this one, what I'm actually doing is I've cut a header, which was the up and down on the left-hand side. Then I'm doing the, the kind of the up and down stripes and that's going to be the most efficient way of getting this lawn done. Now, if you also look very, very closely, it does look, even though this is speeded up, it looks like I'm running after the lawnmower. And for reference, I have my mowers tuned, let's say, so they actually run at the highest possible speed that the manufacturer will permit. And I think that actually the engineers that work on my mowers speed up the engine slightly in order to get the walking speed slightly faster. But look, over a period of 100 square meters, a slightly faster walking pace will speed things up significantly. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but it's a really, really top tip. Now, the other thing to point out while I'm charging up and down this lawn is that um, it is, as you look carefully, it is quite bumpy, it is quite bumpy lawn, but I know when the scarification gets done, I know that basically that scarification process is gonna smooth out some of the crowns. Keep in mind, we won't be able to very easily lift the shallows because the shallow areas of the lawn are a lot bigger than you realize. And the crowns, the raised bits of your lawn, or this lawn, will have probably happened over the Christmas, over the winter period, when certain pockets of the soil have just become frozen and risen. Anyway, that's that bit done. So I better get on. So that's all cut. Um, now I'm just gonna, take you for a little spin around the lawn and just show you or tell you what I've felt because there's something a little bit weird uh, in the process that uh, most people <laughs> won't tell you but uh, before I really get an understanding of the condition of a lawn um, running the hater over it now keep in mind that this thing's been attached to me or various models have been attached to me for 20 years I can feel the condition of a lawn um, through the the vibrations the undulation of the lawn so the first thing to know um, we won't be leveling out this lawn that's the really important thing to do so if you've got an unlevel lawn if it's unlevel to more than say five mil i.e the shallows and the crowns are deeper than five mil you're really looking at actually to get it flat you need a new lawn you need it regraded it's actually really difficult to regrade a lawn let's say in my experience it's really difficult um it's easier just to put a new lawn in or grow a new lawn from seed but um so the the feel is there's quite a lot of high crowns in the lawn and uh, the scarification process will knock off let's say it will knock off some of the crowns now if you look at the cut um you'll see that it's been fairly savage but what it's kind of doing is it's highlighting uh, much more visibly the types of grass that uh, exist in the current lawn and really when you're renovating a lawn you're sometimes sympathetically um, adding new grass to it to kind of blend in with what's already here so a renovation creates a, a substantially better lawn but it's not a brand new lawn 
it's say it's not grown from um, seed in perfect conditions so you're going to have a blend um, of different grasses in the lawn and actually you're going to have some poa some meadow grass some finer fescues some rye grasses all sorts of bits and pieces now from a weed perspective there's not an awful lot of troublesome weeds in this lawn there's a few surface plantains that you can see um, maybe a bit of dandelion action and a little bit there of uh, what's that buttercup looking at it these are the pads of meadow grass there there so the lawn's kind of largely full of uh, <clears throat> what you typically expect grass that's been establishing itself and surviving over a number of years so the grass blend that we're going to put in obviously I've talked about the grass seed but the grass blend we're going to put in is called uh, it's called a Barenberg Extreme that's what we're putting in today and uh, there are lots of um, different seeds you can work with but the benefit of Barenberg particularly in this lawn is that the shadier more difficult areas to maintain the lawn Barenberg kind of will set itself up pretty well in that and also it's quite resilient hard wearing drought tolerant feed receptive all of that stuff so um yeah i've rabbited on a little bit but anyway better get on with the scarification now over to the wee bang let's go to eagle eyed detailists amongst you i've um i've strimmed up the edge uh, it's a bit of a rough strim obviously but it's a relatively uh let's say it's a, a lawn in progress so i've strimmed up the area now top tip we have big glass windows here like many other properties that i work on uh now the strimmer runs counterclockwise okay so when you're strimming make sure that you are uh, doing it in in a direction uh, that it allows for the strimmer to fling anything counterclockwise away from the windows that took me several years to learn or actually should i say several broken windows to learn and a broken window a double glazed broken window costs a fortune to replace these days so counterclockwise and uh, you should be okay. So yeah, all the edges are trimmed up. Um, so now, and I've trimmed up the area over there. So now the next job is get on the scarifier and uh, start seeing what the surface is gonna look like. But look, <laughs> if I'm honest, it's already looking better. Already. If the truth be known, dear friends, uh, in my eyes, so they say, progress is always a joy. And uh, when things start to be uh, pulled together, uh, the lawn does start looking better very, very quickly. It gives you a sense of optimism that we're doing the right stuff, doesn't it? So um, anyway, stop jabbering and crack on with this scarification, shouldn't I?
I won't video this whole thing, but uh, for some of you who might be wondering why I dragged or went backwards with the scarifier. So on the scarifier, you've got a square blottomed uh, cutting blade. And uh, over time, the front edge gets slightly rounded off. And particularly on the edges, um, the, the fresher blade, which is on the back side, if I drag it, the fresher blade uh, actually does the work. So um, it's very intentional. Basically, I use the front blade to do most of the scarification. And then in particular areas where I want to agitate the, uh, the saw a bit more, I do a reverse drag. Not many people do that. Anyway. I'm going to just stop this now and uh, do the rest of it and then we'll come back. Um, let's just say the day started. Um, the gods were being kind to me this morning. They said, we will let you have sun for an hour and a half. Uh, there is now a little, a little precipitation in the air, um, which isn't ideal. Uh, it's actually much more pleasant. I should say it's actually fine if you're going to renovate a lawn in slightly inclement conditions. So inclement as opposed to rain. Um, but the... <clears throat> where was it going to go? Um, yeah, that, that's the scarification done, I should say. Got a bit lost there. Um, but it's a little bit drizzly now. There's always a little bit of precipitation in the, <laughs> in the air. Yeah. Horrible. Anyway, I will crack on and the precipitation <laughs> may leave me, may travel through and then sun will return. Actually, I don't think it's going to return today, so best to crack on. So there you can see the wheels from the scarifier. Yes, have left little marks. That's mainly to do with, um, obviously the surface is dampish as opposed to dryish. And um, and obviously it's, it's kicked up because the... Uh, the way I've done it, it's kicked up quite a lot of soil. And if I go a bit closer, it's very intentional. So you see there, that has kicked up one of the crowns. And wherever you can see the blades, much more evidently, um, it's basically kicked up a crown, a raised bit of the lawn, let's say. So um, the crowns will come down. Yes, the crowns will come down. And the shallows will raise, only mildly, but it will smooth things out. You'll be surprised. So um, you can see it's uh, lifted out a fair amount of the old knacker's grass. So next job now is to get the get the leaf rake out again. And in this precipitation, uh, rake up all the all of the grass. And then we can go seeding and dressing and a little bit of grading. And then we can cover it over with germination sheet and peg it down. And jobs are good. And, um, anyway, any questions, remember, do ask. And at this point, if you're finding this video informative and you think I'd be a worthwhile coach, lawn expert, grass master, kind of lawn magician, a good guy to follow, then why not just uh, hit subscribe? Anyway, better. Hello friends, it's me. This is the end of the video. So look, the bad news is the rain came down probably around about two hours earlier than forecast and it came down a lot heavier than forecast as well. So we've had to suspend play today, but we will back, we'll be back tomorrow. So look, if you've got any questions about what's been done today, what you've seen being done, then why not drop a comment and I'll get to it overnight. Now, the other thing is just one last little request from me again. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I promise uh, if I can get to 500 subscribers before the end of the week, I promise that I will try and do something different in the next video that might be quite, I don't know, quite inspiring. But anyway, thanks for subscribing or commenting on liking. Look, we're, we're on a little journey together, so come join me.